Sam Mayer loses his Talladega appeal. The CW might be calling races remotely, and it sounds like NASCAR might loosen up the whole DVP controversy. <music> Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. So as you know, 2311 Racing, FRM, they filed a preliminary injunction on Wednesday to, you know, race in 2025 under the current charter system while, you know, racing with their charters. NASCAR on Wednesday night officially opposed that injunction in their submittal to the courts, essentially arguing that no irreparable harm has been done because those teams plan to race anyways, even as open cars. Uh, by racing as open cars, uh, they can still, you know, make money. And also if they ultimately prevail, the winnings from, you know, them winning the the lawsuit will cover any damages. So we'll have to wait and now see what a judge says. Those dates got pushed back until October 4th because of the hurricane. NASCAR said they may have to close their offices for a week. So they got an extension on that by an additional week. Uh, the teams wanted October 29th or 30th, I believe, and the judge decided on November 4th. So we'll have to wait until then. Now, into other news from Wednesday into Thursday. Sam Mayer's team officially lost their appeal on Wednesday when they went in front of the National Motorsports Appeals Panel, and they were there to argue the uh, disqualification that they received at Talladega this past weekend, where they were deemed to be too low in post-race inspection. The team went in front of uh, the appeals panel. The appeals a panel uh, sided with NASCAR and said that the team violated section 14.17.3.2.2.2. I memorized it so you wouldn't have to, essentially saying that the car was too low in the rear end. Dale Jr. responded to, you know, them losing their appeal. Dale says... The rear clip of the one was bent from a series of aggressive bump drafting incidents Saturday. We had photo evidence of the kinks in the tubing and a chassis that was previously certified along with body scans before and after the event. There isn't much we can do about the clip possibly getting destroyed in these races. It happens. Unfortunately, we weren't able to convince the panel of our unenviable position or situation onto the Roval. So... It sounds like the team doesn't necessarily agree with it. Obviously, this was an expedited appeals process because this weekend's race at the Roval is an elimination race. For Sam Mayer, this is a big blow for his chances to advance on to the next round. It does really help out his teammate, Justin Allgaier, who previously before the penalty was 18 points below the cutoff line. He is now only seven points below the cutoff line going to the Roval. For Mayer, he went from being plus 10 to the cutoff line to now being 13 points below the cutoff line. He's going to need to have a big race at the Roval this weekend uh, to get his way in. It's not uh, an impossible situation, and uh, the amount and the rate at which Justin Allgaier is wrecking race cars and getting caught up in other people's incidents, there's a good chance that you know he can still be able to advance on and not have to worry about the cars in front of him, uh, but he will have to score points, obviously. Today's video is sponsored by Lockdown Brand. Head over to LockdownBrand.com today. Check out their t-shirts, their motorsport-inspired apparel, the collabs that they have with various drivers. Their hats are super popular amongst the motorsport community. Use code BREAKHARD10 at checkout for 10% off your order. Now, on to another topic that came out on Wednesday afternoon, evening, night, depending on what time zone you're in. Adam Stern from the Sports Business Journal uh, reported that the CW is exploring the possibility of broadcasting select NASCAR Xfinity Series races remotely in 2025 from the new NASCAR production studios. And listen, it's a it's a uh, impressive facility that NASCAR uh, Productions has there. It's what fifty eight thousand square feet. It costs about fifty three million dollars. They got monitors out the wazoo. They are really equipped to do anything and everything at that studio. The problem here is we've all been treated, unfortunately, reluctantly, tortured. Honestly, maybe might be a better word for it by the truck broadcasts that have been remotely. So if you're not aware, and somehow some people still aren't aware of this, when the Fox portion of the cup schedule ends, the Fox truck schedule obviously continues on, but they go to a remote booth. So they call it from the Charlotte studio there for Fox using something that they refer to as a home run system. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't think it's much of a home run because the remote broadcasts for the truck series are bad. They're just downright bad most of the time. It feels like the announcers miss a lot of things. It feels really disjointed. It feels really disconnected from the actual race. Now, 
I will say this, I have heard from people that have done remote broadcasts that they actually enjoy doing the remote broadcast because they're literally looking at what you're looking at at home. So they're calling on the screen what they see, except I feel like they still don't do that very well. At least the truck broadcast, in my opinion, doesn't do that very well. The Formula One broadcast that used to be on Speed and then on NBC, they were a remote booth. They called those races remotely, whether that be Will Buxton, Matchett, Hobbs, um, uh, Varsha, or even throw Lee Diffie in there, they did a really good job. It's essentially just three blokes sitting around calling a race in a dark studio on a Sunday morning. They did a phenomenal job. Now, maybe there's a that's where the disconnect is, is like road course racing is easier to call and then what you see at oval tracks, but it feels like the Fox truck broadcast booth just continually misses things that are happening on track. And now maybe it's just because of how poorly I think that that has gone, that I'm really nervous about the CW possibly doing it. And hey, maybe the CW will absolutely knock it out of the park. I think when it comes to oval racing, having your broadcast booth at the racetrack is really beneficial. How many times have we heard Dale Jr. on the NBC broadcast say something that is happening on track, and then you see the cameras you know, turn to that? and picking up on things. I think picking up on the crowd reaction, being able to see what's happening on pit road from the broadcast with all of that is really, you know, important. And don't get me wrong, the broadcast at the track when you're at a big oval like a Daytona, Talladega, Michigan, something like that, are still watching the monitor that's in front of them. In fact, I think I've heard Boyer and Harvick and even Gordon say that like Fox encourages them to look at, maybe even Dale, even Dale Jr., encourages them to look at what's happening on the broadcast, on the monitor and really only talk about that. Now, obviously, there's different philosophies on how to call races here. I just am super nervous about a remote broadcast booth. And that's not to say that Adam Alexander or whoever else is the lead over there at CW can't do a good job. I absolutely think they can. But man, maybe if you're saying, I hope when they say select, they mean like the select of select, like three races a season. Like, oh, we don't want to go to Portland or Sonoma or something like that. Okay, I can get behind that. Um, but I think you got to go to most of the races because if not, I feel like it does a disservice to the fan because it doesn't feel connected at all. I mean, ultimately, I guess I could sit here in my office and call a race if I really wanted to, but it's not going to have the same feel as being at the racetrack. Imagine if like college football games were called remotely and some of them are from ESPN, but imagine like a big time college football game being called remotely and not getting that crowd, um, the ambiance of the crowd, the energy from the crowd that plays into uh, calling a calling a football game. Same thing with calling a race. I, I just think that it is much more beneficial to have them there at the track. And listen, I know it's expensive. There's a lot that goes into having at track um, talent there. There's a lot more than I anticipated. I'll be honest with you, but I think it's worth the spend. I think you have to do it. Um, and I hope that, you know, when they say select races, it's, it's very few. So we'll have to wait and see on that. On to the topic of DVP real quick. Obviously, everybody's favorite topic coming out of Talladega and, of course, Kansas the week prior to that. Chris Gabehart was on Sirius XM NASCAR on uh, Thursday, and he said that the teams had a meeting with NASCAR on Thursday, and it sounds like NASCAR is going to loosen up their DVP rules, meaning that they will take a car back to its pit box and allow it to be serviced and repaired if possible, and then it can re-enter the race. Where previously, as the rule states, as Josh Berry was victim to and not some people on Sunday at Talladega, um, you know, if you can't drive back to pit road, you're done. You're getting loaded up, hooked up to the uh, tow truck. You're done for the day. Now on, of course, Sunday, they kind of loosen those rules as uh, Elton Sawyer said they wanted to err on the side of the competitor in this situation from week to week. That's slightly confusing, but if that's the new direction they're going in, fine. I've, I'm totally cool with that. Uh, so it sounds like, according to Gabe Hart, that that's what it's going to be. But we're going to have to wait for NASCAR to, I guess, formally announce it or convey that uh, to the fans. If that is what happens, I'm in favor of that. My only concern with doing that is, does that extend caution periods? Does that take away potential green flag laps? That's my biggest concern with it, because if they take a car back to the pit box, and let's say it can't move, and the team tries to repair that, like, oh, we can't repair it, car won't move either, then we have to bring another um, tow truck down pit road, hook that car up, take it behind the wall, and that adds another lap potentially to, to the, you know, to the pace, to the caution, and that takes away green flag, you know, racing, and I don't want to see that. Summer Daytona race of 2023, uh, something similar happened where, like, I believe the 12 possibly, and maybe somebody else 
got put in, nah, it wasn't the 12 because that was a big wreck for him. It was somebody else. Regardless, got taken to the pit box to be repaired. And then ultimately it was like, oh yeah, we can't repair this. So then we had to bring another tow truck down pit road, hook it up. And it really extended a caution period, uh, which was slightly annoying being there in person. So yeah, if that's what the direction they're going, I'm totally cool with that. Uh, I guess we just need it to be conveyed now. Also, this upcoming weekend, the Charlotte Roval. I will be going to the Roval for the first time this weekend, obviously both for Saturday and Sunday. If I see you there, say hi if you would like to. Uh, I will try to go to the tweet up on Sunday morning that Bob Pockers puts together, um, assuming I have time. But yeah, if you have a good place to eat around there, around the Charlotte area, let me know in the comments because uh, yeah, it's been a while since I've been down to uh, Charlotte. So like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.